Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 24th June 2017. I am Sagar Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader of Superior Profit, a company based in Singapore. I will not spend time to introduce myself. If you are interested, you may go through the website www.superiorprofit.co and click on the About menu. To know more about me, the company, and more importantly, how it can help in your own trading. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior Profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we will look at oil, gold, India's nifty futures and few forex pairs through Q technical charts. We'll also do the same for SPY, QQQ, DIA, and IWM, the broad market ETFs in the USA. Before going into market internal analysis, sector and industry analysis using graphs and ranking table. Along the way, we may go through some of the trade ideas shared in our traders community since our last class and look for trades for the upcoming week. Q&A is throughout the session. You may ask questions anytime through the Q&A panel and I will try to answer them as we go along. This was the last slide of the presentation. So let's move to live system. Let's begin with US oil. We are using our standard chart arrangement. We are looking at weekly backdrop template on the left hand side and daily hop on template on the right hand side. This week US oil dropped further. Last week we noted that it was near support in the weekly chart. However, it fell almost in straight line. Somewhere in the last week, there was a bull release signal on this yellow candle. However, it was a solid candle, not a hollow candle, that is bearish candle. And therefore, it didn't meet all the requirements of a box long trade setup. As of Friday, we again see that there is a stretch release signal, the bull release with the cyan color. That means the oversold condition is not there anymore. However, the weekly backdrop is still magenta that is bearish. Therefore, we again don't have any possibility to take any stretch release that is sideways market box trade. And also in the daily chart, we can see that it is straight going down. So it is not a sideways market at all. Interestingly, US oil dropped and along with energy as a sector dropped. However, some of the industries in energy sector are holding up well. We will look at that when we go through sector and industry analysis. Let's look at gold using the gold ETF GLD. In the last class, we discussed that gold is showing wild moves going from upper boundary to lower boundary, then lower boundary to upper boundary, and again from upper to lower boundary. However, in a longer term period, we can see that it is going up with higher low and higher high. Therefore, gold is in uptrend. Three days earlier, price hit very slow direction line and went up from there. 
it also had a bull release signal two days ago however it was very close to the yellow slow direction line so we would not be taking any trade at the right edge of the chart also there is no standard trade setup let's now look at india's nifty futures here we are looking at india's nifty that is broad market index futures using daily hop on template in the last market roundup we discussed that that price was in strong uptrend with higher low and higher high and it was also close to the memory support line so though there were few bearish color candles and price was at pendulum high indicated by the thumbs down signals there was no short or long trade setup at the right edge of the chart we see that price went down again for last two days thursday and friday in india however price is right on top of the memory support line and therefore we will not be attempting any short trade right now and because the traffic light is red color we will not be attempting any long trade either so there is no trade right now in india's nifty futures let's look at sing dollar sing dollar is in downtrend overall last week we discussed that these two days one day sharply going down and next day sharply going up it might have something to do with the americas that is uss federal reserves rate decision after that price slightly went up to the value area that is the place of the yellow and the white direction lines at the right edge of the chart there is a bear release signal the red color down arrow the candle color is neutral traffic light color is yellow that is neutral the candle shape is somewhat indecisive because it has an upper tail also a lower tail lower tail is slightly bigger than upper tail the body is solid so what may happen is that next week the price may drop if that happens then it may give us a go with flow short trade setup we may keep an eye for that and that may give us a profitable swing short trade or a short day trade opportunity as well let's look at australia dollar australia dollar bounced up from the memory support line at this point then went to the upper boundary there was a bear release signal and then price came down to the value area because it has hit the upper boundary it has created higher high and higher low so australian dollar versus us dollar is in uptrend next week if it goes up then it may give us a valid go with flow long trade setup that will be a possible swing long trade on the other hand if australian dollar dips down then it may give a lower high and lower low and that will create a go with flow short trade setup let us look at us market now we start with spy again we are looking at hop on template daily chart on the right hand side and weekly chart backdrop template on the left hand side there was a bearish headwind in the daily chart and since then price couldn't go up it is moving in narrow range down slightly this week from open however it opened with a gap up so for the week we can see it closed slightly higher but effectively we can see that it is moving sideways price is very close to the memory support lines so we will not be taking any short trade right now overall it is in clear uptrend with higher low and higher high 
the weekly backdrop candle colors are magenta so even if price goes up on monday we will be careful about taking any long trade friday's candle was indecisive with upper tail lower tail and narrow body thursday's body was also very narrow unless this indecisiveness goes away it may not be safe to take any trade in spy we look at qqq qqq was outperforming spy for long time except two previous weeks when it declined while spy had gone up this week qqq came back to its usual form that is outperforming spy Though SPY declined slightly from open, we can see QQQ went up from open. There is no trade signal at the right edge of the chart. The candle traffic light color is green. It is in uptrend, higher low and higher high. But the weekly candle color is bearish, that is magenta, and therefore will not be able to take any go with flow long trade. And it is in uptrend, so we will not be trying any short trade either. If price goes down next week, still we will be careful about taking any short trade because of the memory line that is very close by. This week we can see activity steadily declined. And for the whole week, activity is much lower than previous week. Previous week. And also the week before that, QQQ declined with high volume, but that high volume is absent in this week's daily and weekly charts. Let's look at DIA. DIA went up for several weeks. This week also it closed with a bullish, that is cyan backdrop color candle. It is overbought in the weekly chart as seen by the dots on top of the candles. In the daily chart, it displayed a bearish headwind. And since then, price couldn't go up. It declined for four successive days. It is still in uptrend with higher low and higher high. There is no trade setup at the right edge of the chart. The last ETF that we look into is IWM. This is the Russell 2000 ETF. Last week we had discussed about the box short trade setup that one could take using the watermark resistance level, extreme high activity and price coming down with a bear release signal. Only alert trader using real time chart could take the trade because by the end of the day, there was a lower tail. So by the end of the day, one will not be able to take a trade. In the weekly chart, we see this week also, it ended with somewhat indecisive candle with lower tail and upper tail and very narrow body in effect last three weeks price is moving sideways because it is moving in sideways market there is no trade setup at the right edge of the chart if price was to go up to this watermark resistance level and till down from there then it might give us another box short trade opportunity. So at the right edge of the chart right now, there is no standard Q trade setup. This chart also illustrates how we decide whether a Q standard trade setup is there or not. First, we check that what is the overall market condition. Is it in uptrending market, downtrending, that is trending markets or not, sidewise or not? 
exhausting or not that is bouncing from a memory line or reversing with a headwind signal if we answer to that question saying that the market is sideways market then the only trade setup we are going to look for is a box trade setup that is when price is going to the resistance level and coming down or going to the support level and coming up so in sideways market we only look for that trade setup because now price is in the value area we will not be trying to take any trade let's now move to broad market sector and industry analysis for broad market we will go to our website every week we look at broad market internals using nasdaq composite index weekly chart on the left hand side and nyc composite index weekly chart on the right hand side because it is using composite index and weekly chart it is to be used only for long term investment decision and not for swing trading and certainly not for day trading just like we saw spy decline slightly we can see that nyc composite index declined slightly whereas just like QQQ, NASDAQ index went up. In effect, in the weekly chart, NASDAQ composite index is moving sideways. SPY is going up. As far as higher high and higher low are concerned, NASDAQ and NYSE are in clear uptrend. Other than the indices, we look at three pairs of internals new high lows advanced decline and up down volume this week all the six internals ended positive and went up cyan color means that positive as well as it went up all of them went up this week so the internals are bullish this week they are not able to surpass earlier highs over longer period the internals are weak so in summary we conclude that the indices are in clear uptrend in longer term weekly chart internals continue to be weak however this specific week the internals are clearly bullish however this apparent strength of internals are not reflected everywhere one place it is not reflected is the NYSE composite index. It actually declined with a solid candle and it has a bare release signal now, the magenta dot on top of the candle. Also, when we go to sector analysis, we will see that several sectors declined. So that is giving some conflicting signals Let's look at sector and industry analysis now. We'll find very interesting insight from the sector and industry analysis. Every week for sector performance, we look at three review periods. The red bar indicates this week performance, blue bar one week before that and green bar two weeks prior to blue bar. So in total, they constitute four weeks or one month of sector performance. We look at the bullet points one by one, starting with pointer one. Market indices and internals going up this week, bellies the weakness seen in sector analysis. Almost all the markets gain this week came from healthcare and technology sectors. Healthcare had a very large move up and technology also had a considerable gain. Most of the other sectors declined and the declines were also substantial. Basic materials slightly went up. So though the broad market internals were quite strong, this shows that only few sectors went up. Most of them went down. If we look at number two, bullet number two, telecom and utilities 
played up down up for last three weeks is it time to be up next if so then AT&T the symbol is T may be a stock to watch for it is near support in daily and it is one of the strongest as seen from Q vital score it still doesn't have any buy signal on Q Hopon chart but one may keep an eye on that so let's look at AT&T for one minute we can see in the daily chart it came to the memory support line it is making a higher high and so far it has a higher low so next week if it goes up then it may give us a go with flow long trade setup of course the weekly also has to be aligned if the weekly is not aligned we will not be taking a swing long trade to be on the safe side but we may still take a day trade in the long direction so we looked at at and because telecom and also utilities had up down up move for three weeks this week it is down this long red bar so there is a chance telecom will go up next week and that may bring at and up right from the memory support line we look at bullet number three that is here energy sector dropped significantly along with oil we can see this long red bar oil declined sharply from previous week however unit cop a stock that we discover as fundamentally strong is so far holding on to its bottom we had a profitably box long trade in unt recently will another such trade opportunity come our way let us look at unt again through q vital and also through the chart we use this q vital to do fundamental analysis and especially peer analysis the first step is to type the symbol and click on this peer icon to get all the peers we can get it in terms of industry peer sector and country we can get up to 50 peers i usually keep it to 25 because it fits on the screen that i am using once we get the peers we can just use the peers list as the q vital analysis list or we can add to that list or change to that list so for example if we wanted to add one indian oil company let's say reliance industries then we may add that so we have the peers of unt that is retrieved from thomson writers icon that is metastock zenith based on the industry group which is the oil and gas exploration and production that is the industry group of unt so all these stocks now will belong to oil and gas exploration and production they may be from different countries but will be from same industry group and we have manually added reliance and then we click on this boy calculating things it will show it is retrieving now it is retrieving fundamental information and doing the q vital calculations now it has populated all the other tabs we may go through them but for now we just go to the scoring tab we have multiple pieces of information the most important as the first five or six column the sixth column pbr score is important for financials because we are looking at oil and gas we can look at only the first five columns and how to find out which one is strongest is very easy just look for the stocks with maximum green color along these important parameters earning stability which shows whether earnings data is reliable from quarter to quarter relative value score calculates whether the stock is strong relative to its overall groups industry sector etc across all the stocks not only across these 25 stocks that we have fetched 26 now with reliance 
but across all the stocks and internal value is also across all the stocks it calculates what is the intrinsic value of the company based on earnings projection dividend projection etc the first three columns are calculated in a scale of 1 to 100 whereas the next three columns ev ebitda pe and pbr they are calculated only with respect to the stocks we have on the left hand side so in this case among these 26 stocks so we can see UNT on most of the parameters is green so it is one of the strongest in fact it is the strongest in this list of oil and gas exploration and production companies energy was down very much that is the time we start looking for strong stocks in oil energy sector to look for potential long-term buy position those may also be swing trade so we identified UNT already in previous weeks as being one of the fundamentally strongest. In fact, it is stronger than ExxonMobil. It is stronger than Chevron in terms of fundamentals relative to its current price. If we look at the chart now, we can see in weekly chart there was a bullish headwind three weeks ago. And last week, on this candle this green candle we had a box long trade setup we discussed it in the class that was a profitable trade setup after that price now has come down at the right edge of the chart it is again showing bull release signal on friday it is at watermark support level both in daily and in weekly and it has created a false downside breakout that is price tried to go below watermark support level but failed and went back up it also had heavy activity on wednesday we have a bull release signal on friday the weekly backdrop candle color is yellow that is neutral therefore it meets all the requirements of a box sideways market long trade setup Somebody might have already taken the long position at the end of Friday. That is our usual preference. If all the trade signals are matching, then personally, I prefer to take the trade just before market close. If somebody didn't do that, then on Monday, if it is still going up, one may use the Q fine tune real time chart to see if a long opportunity is still there. Stop loss is narrow stop will be just below the watermark support level and one may book profit at the memory resistance level which is also the place of the declining yellow direction line so we looked at unt energy as a sector is down very much but we tried to look for fundamentally strong companies unt is one of them and we saw that unt actually has a box long trade setup right now we look at bullet number four healthcare healthcare is now up for more than four consecutive review periods this is not the usual pattern of movement in the sectors in recent times many sectors are up down up but now already for more than four that is at least five weeks healthcare is steadily going up as a sector and through these market roundups, we are able to track that. And some of you might have caught the bottom of some very profitable, fundamentally strong healthcare stocks. We look at more of those in our industry analysis. Look at bullet point five now. On 3rd June, in the market roundup, we identified Jilid, that is in healthcare, as one of the strongest from Q Vital peer analysis. That analysis was timely as Jilid went up nicely since then. What about Valiant? There was a quiz on VRX that is Valiant in quiz playground and it might be played nicely with an option trade. Let us look at Jilid and Valiant both. I see there is a question on metal sector metal belongs to the basic material sector 
we can see that basic materials slightly went up. The percentage is very small relative to technology and healthcare on the upper side and also relative to utility, telecom, industrial, financial energy on the downside. But there are certain interesting insights in some of the industry groups belonging to basic materials. We will look at that in our industry analysis. Let's look at Gilead and Valiant now. We first look at the fundamental strength of Gilead. And when typing the symbol name, we have to type the Thomson Reuters symbol, that is GILD.O, get its peers. By the way, this manual list is not restricted to 25 or 50 stocks. It goes up to 150 rows. I think that is big enough for peer analysis. So if you have a number of stocks in your holding, maybe long term investment portfolio, you may remove the peer finding stock. Just type all your holdings here. Do the Q vital score analysis and look at the other tabs, basic information, price performance, fundamental info, and finally scoring to see if the stocks you are holding are strong or not. Sometimes how long-term investors play is that they buy a strong stock when it is down. I prefer that way. Some people buy strong stocks when they are breaking out from the top. That is also possible, but my preference is to buy low. What happens sometimes for long-term investing, it may go down again. If it is not fundamentally strong, psychologically and financially speaking also, it is very difficult to hold on to such a stock. But if the stock is very strong fundamentally, even if it goes down, we have more confidence to hold on to it. I had a number of stocks in my retirement account in Singapore. I plotted all of them through the manual list. I did the Q vital scoring and I realized some of them are not very strong. Not very strong, relatively speaking. So when I initially bought them, I looked at them individually. They looked strong. They were almost monopolies in Singapore market. They were Singapore Post and Singapore Press Holdings. When I did the peer analysis across the industry group, then I found that there are other better opportunities. These are not at all the fundamentally strongest. So that helped me make the decision to exit these two stocks. They may again go up. So that may be a technical trade. But for long term investing, I prefer to hold stocks which are fundamentally strong and Q Vital helped me in that. So you may use it in a similar way to analyze your current stock holdings. And if you are holding, for example, Home Depot and Lowe's, you may find out which one of them stronger and decide to hold the stronger one and not hold the weaker one. We go back to Jailid now, do the fundamental scoring. It is showing retrieving. Once it is done, we will go to the scoring table. Okay, it refreshes the data. So this is Jailid. Still, it is one of the strongest. And the other stronger ones are MGN, Celgene, as you can see and United Therapeutics, row 15. But Jailid is the strongest. That is why we were looking at Jailid and we already had a very profitable trade. Let's look at that. In the weekly chart on the left hand side using backdrop template, we see that Jailid declined a lot. We can compress it further. And we see Jailid declined a lot from a price level of about 120. And then it came to a low of price level about 65, I think. So that was a very big drop from 120 to around 65. But it is also one of the strongest fundamentally. So this is the kind of stock we like to buy at the bottom. In the daily chart, we discussed that there is a long potential around this day, this candle, I think. June 3rd, this candle, I think. This day. And since then, it didn't go below the watermark low. Instead, it sharply went up. So we could catch the very bottom. Now it is already overextended, overbought, as we can see 
from this cyan dots so we will not be taking any long trade right now those who bought the stock on 3rd june using this cyan candle when it was discussed in the weekly market roundup they could easily book some profit when this watermark or this watermark was hit and may hold partial position using stop in a way that the entire trade is risk free from now onward we also notice it went up with extreme high activity that is a good sign for a trade that is breaking out of the very low that is pendulum low and out of the base let's look at the quiz on valiant we look at that from our website if we go to the home page and scroll down we can see some of the quizzes are listed here but we don't have space to list all the quizzes we can go to the traders community and then go to quiz playground and this is the latest quiz this drug company broke out of rock bottom price so let's look at that the question was will you consider long term buy or swing trade in vrx options are long term buy swing trade and both let's look at q vital score of valiant first so here i retrieved the prs of vrx valiant all the stocks came up then i calculated the q vital score we can immediately see that like jilid among its peer group valiant is clearly one of the strongest relative to its current price isn't it yes or no if somebody says no based on these numbers it is not i don't know what to do <laughs> but it is clearly strong so i looked at that then i looked at the line chart for valiant and it shows that very big drop from the peak of around 250 260 to a low of around 10 and at the right edge of the chart it is breaking up from the base it broke out of the memory resistance line and there was heavy activity sometime earlier this is a weekly line chart so it has a nice bottom created a base for long time breaking out of that and then i looked at the at a glance template the weekly backdrop on the left hand side daily hop on on the right hand side now we see that relative performance is tilting up sharply in daily and also in weekly the backdrop candle color became cyan and it broke out of narrow range it is already above upper boundary it went above upper boundary on thursday with extreme high activity and it also broke above the watermark resistance level in my style i prefer not to take breakout trades except when it is still a low risk trade and if it is moving out of narrow range market so valiant looked interesting to me because we saw for 5 weeks now the sector was going up several stocks have already moved up like jilid and few other companies we look at them and valiant was starting to go up it was fundamentally strong so that caught my eye and i posted the quiz so based on these charts and the fundamental analysis what is your view would you consider taking a long term buy swing trade or both for valiant what do you say you may type your answer in the q and a panel both dimitri says both amit says long term buy yes you know long term investors can make a lot of profit only thing it doesn't give as much excitement as swing trading and certainly not as much as day trading whereas it is easier to trade takes little time one just needs to wait patiently swing trading can also be extremely profitable especially in our way what is our way we don't just look at technical chart we combine that with qh industry ranking and analysis so we take long for swing trade only in industries which are showing strength in most recent period we take swing short 
only in industries which are showing weakness in most recent period. What about long term investment? When an industry group is weak for long time, we already start locating fundamentally strong stocks in that industry. And when the industry starts to go up, we take the long trade for long term investment in that particular strong stock. So we did that for Jailid and I think Valiant also has a very good buy opportunity. Some of these can be stock trade and some of them can be option trade. I will explain one option setup today on Valiant. This is one of the most profitable setups and lowest risk option setups. I demonstrated it earlier, quite a few weeks ago, few months ago using GLD. And the same setup is available on Valiant now. Okay, let me use the whiteboard. There are different ways that options can be traded. Sometimes people trade options based on its delta value. That is if a stock is going up, just buy call as a directional trade. If it is going down, buy put as a directional trade. They don't necessarily look at the probability of the option based on implied volatility where the stock may end or which ranges uh, the stock may go to at the end of its expiry. The other way, some people just look at probability, don't look at the chart. But in superior profit way, we like to take trades where all the edges are in favor. We see that in our swing trading where we combine industry ranking with technical charts. And for option trading, we prefer to look at both. If possible, not every setup we need to do that. Now, let me ask this question. Suppose we have an option setup where there is a 40% chance the stock will remain within this range. And together, there is a 60% chance together that it will be outside this range. So just looking at the probability based on implied volatility of the options, we be happy to take a trade where our bet is that the stock will be either in bucket A or bucket B at expiry and not at bucket C. The answer will be yes, because if we keep on playing that trade over and over and over again, there is a significant edge of 20%. Just looking at statistical probability, if we play long enough, we'll certainly make money in the long run. Now, what if we also had a trade where the directional probability on the chart says that the likelihood of the stock ending in A or B bucket is higher than ending in C bucket then we have the statistical edge and we also have a directional edge based on chart. That is the trade that we would like to have. So let's look at that trade on Valiant. This is the PNL graph. It shows stock price on the X axis and the possible PNL on the Y axis. And there are two lines drawn the cyan color line is how it will look at expiry and magenta color line is how it will look right now. This is as of beginning of market on Friday. Why beginning of market on Friday? Let's go back to the chart. We see on Thursday it already broke out of the watermark level, broke out of the narrow range and it was bullish in backdrop color in the weekly chart on the left hand side. So I was thinking of taking a position in VRX near market open on Friday. So that is when I did the analysis and the risk profile is from there. So this is beginning of Friday. See the last two rows. We have one sell call and we have two buy call. So that is called a back spread. How I remember, I always have funny ways of remembering back spread means B for buy, 
So buy more legs than sell. That is how I remember. And there is the other one ratio spread. R is similar to right, though it's not W, but okay. <laughs> so ratio speed must be I am writing more, that is selling more legs than buying. So this is back spread one is to two, where I am buying two lots and selling one lot. So this is a one by two back spread with call option on VRX expiring 21st July. So that has about 28, 30 days. And I had a credit of 28 cents. So I didn't have to pay money. The margin requirement is there, but I didn't have to pay money. Now let us look at the probability, even without looking at the stock chart on Q trading system, we see in terms of probability, the probability that the stock will be in this range is 17.95 plus 25. So it's about 42, 43% that the stock will stay in this range. If it goes up, we can see from the cyan color, it is acting like a stock buy because it is going up linearly. So it is as if I am holding a long stock position. If it goes up from 17.74 price level at expiry. On the downside, we see that from this low 14.29 onwards, if it expires below that, I have no loss. In fact, I have some gain. So it is like buying a stock with a funny kind of stop loss where if it goes down, I still make some money, not stop out with a loss. In the middle, I have a loss. But the probability of the stock finishing in the middle is only about 42% probability that it is either going to close in the left hand range or right hand range is much higher. So simply looking at probabilities, this is a good trade to take. Now see how I decided these strike prices. If it goes below 14.29, I am safe. If it is goes above 17.74, I am safe. How did I decide these strike points? Let's look at the stock chart now. See this Thursday's candle, long candle. On Friday, on the last candle, I'm taking the trade. If the stock closes below the low of this Thursday's candle, see, I am still making profit. If it goes up above Thursday's candle, I am making profit as if I have a long stock position. That is how I decided those two strikes. It had a strong move up out of narrow range with extreme high activity. In about 30 days, the probability that it will close exactly within this candle is low statistically. And also on the chart, I'm thinking either it will go up after breakout or it will be a false breakout and fall down. The probability that it will be exactly within this long candle is small technically also. That is how I decided the strikes. My lower strike is still above the low of Thursday's candle. And higher strike is slightly higher than the high of Thursday's candle. So that is a very low risk trade. The reward risk ratio is pretty high. If you look at the chart move and if you think the stock within 30 days can go to say 19, now it is 15.85, it gained 35 cents on Friday and on Thursday it had a very large gain. So if it closes around 19 even, then we have more than 2 is to 1 reward risk ratio. On the downside, we don't only have loss protection, we actually make profit if it closes below this Thursday candle. So I thought this is a nice setup. This back spread setup doesn't always work in India market because the bid ask spreads are very wide. Whereas for USA market, sometimes when a stock is moving out of narrow range at the bottom, these are extremely low risk trades, high reward risk ratio. And if the stock is fundamentally strong, you can buy one month, two month, or even longer period back spreads for that. That was our analysis of Valiant diverting from the healthcare sector analysis. And we saw that 
just like Jailid had few days ago, VRX now has a potential long trade setup using stock or using back spread call options. Now let us look at industry analysis. Every week we look at the week's best performing industries. We start with bullet point one. Four of the top 10 best performers belong to pharma, biotech, healthcare. We already started looking at it five weeks ago. So it is no surprise that they are coming strong in this week also. For five successive weeks, healthcare sector is strong. Several stocks in these industries went almost straight up for several weeks. Is it time for them to take some rest? At minimum, it may be safer not to buy them right now. For example, BMY, ABT, election. This is another way we use the technical charts. Just because the media is saying that healthcare is going up, pharma biotech are going up, we don't blindly buy a stock. Jailid was a good buy. I think Valiant is a good buy right now. However, if we look at BMY, ABT, election, we'll see they are overextended. Let's look at them now. This is BMY went straight up after the bull release signal, which created, you can say, a false downside breakout with heavy activity. So there was a valid box long trade setup right at the very bottom, but that has already passed. Now it is very much up at the declining, very slow wide direction line. It has a bear release signal. On Friday, it went down with extreme high activity. We are not going to take any short trade because the backdrop candle color is cyan and there is also a memory support line. It also has a lower tail, but neither do we like to take a long trade in a stock that is so much extended to the upside. Let's look at ABOT, ABT. Again, same thing, it went almost straight up. It is well above the upper boundary line to overextended to the upside. So we are not going to take any long trade here either. And Alexian again went straight up. Right now it is actually at multiple memory resistance. Had a nice gap short trade, day trade on Friday. Went down from memory resistance both in daily and weekly. We are always keeping an eye on such memory lines. And in this case, they were both in weekly daily. So anybody having long position who bought probably at the bottom or near the value area would be careful. It is overextended clearly. So we are not going to take any long trade in election right now. We go back to industry analysis. So that was an observation that though many pharma, biotech, healthcare industries are in the best performing groups, some of the stocks are overextended. Let's look at bullet point two. Renewable energy equipment is the best performing this week. We had identified fast solar several weeks ago and it again had a go with flow long trade setup on 21st June this week. And fast solar is one of the strongest in solar energy stocks. Let's look at QVital. Let's look at scoring. None of the stocks are having so many green colors as Jailid, for example, or Valiant, for example. But among the stocks in this industry group, Fast Solar is one of the stronger. So we look at the chart. We could catch almost the very bottom or near the very bottom using the bullish headwind or this cyan candle. We didn't exactly enter on the cyan candle, but maybe next day using early range breakout. It had earnings. Earlier, when I saw the bearish headwind, then I mentioned that if somebody bought at the very bottom, then they may put their stop loss using Q protection signal. Also, there were two magenta color candles. So one could also place a stop just below the second magenta candle. That would have been stopped out. However, on this candle, Wednesday, there was a go it for long trade setup. So a swing trader could easily take that trade and as it hit the watermark resistance level, went very close to the upper boundary on Friday, profit would be booked as least partial profit. 
putting stop in a way that the trade is risk free from that time onward. And I saw that unlike earlier times, when first solar was breaking out of the bottom, the other solar companies were not going up. But at the right edge, if we see now, say sun, the sun had a gap up and then moving sideways. Let's look at run. See, at the right edge, now multiple solar companies are going up. Sun Power, I think, SPWR. It is also one. So multiple stocks in this industry group are going up. The industry itself is performing strongly. So this may be a time we look for long position. Okay, gold mining. Look at the third bullet point in best performing industries. Gold mining did well. GGNEM had box long trades this week. I will not go to the charts now. However, none of the USA gold miners look good fundamentally. That is okay. We can still take a trade. But I am able to trade and probably some of you are able to trade in multiple countries, if not all of you. So we can check evolution in Australia. It's a gold miner that is fundamentally very strong, unlike GG, NEM, etc. And it is at a support level. Silver Lake also in Australia is the second strongest in that country from Q Vital peer analysis also is at a nice support level. Quickly, we we'll look at the charts. This is evolution mining in Australia. We can see it has a very nice support in the weekly as well as daily. The flow candle color is not bullish yet in daily. And also the backdrop candle color is magenta. But this industry gold miners were weak for a long time. So that is the time we start looking for potential long trades for longer term investing. I will look at the Q vital scoring pvn.ax calculate the score okay now the question is why did i think of evolution though it is not green on none of these first five parameters that is because of the growth rate in terms of eps and revenue growth rate it has the best score we can see that from fundamental information in more detail Evolution mining has 66% EPS growth over five years, 40% EPS growth over three years, revenue growth 61% over five years, and about 30% over three years. So if we are studying fundamentals of stock and telling that with stock price, then we know that stocks which are showing growth usually move up much before the ones which are not showing growth. And if they go up, then it is expected that the valuation matrix that is EV, EBITDA, PE, PBR or the other scoring metrics like relative value and internal value, they will not be green. That is expected. So we have two ways of using the fundamental information. Either look for stocks with strong growth, then we don't expect this pricing matrix, expensiveness matrix, we don't expect that to be green. That is one way. The other way is we may have to give up the growth and look for earnings reliability and inexpensiveness. So that was the thought behind deciding on EVN. And technically it is at a very nice support level. Whereas if I look at Silver Lake, get the score, go to fundamental information. If we look at SLR, we see that EPS growth is negative. Revenue growth was there over five years, but over three years it is negative. So when the growth is negative, then stocks don't go up as fast. And then the valuation in terms of if we the PE or the other scoring, we can expect them to be more green. So remember these two ways of using the Q vital fundamental data. Either we go for stocks which has high growth, then we give up some of the factors, the inexpensiveness factors, or we look for still fundamentally strong stocks in terms of valuation but probably will not have high growth. Whereas if I look at a US gold miner, say Newmont, calculate the fundamental data, we see EPS and revenue growth are negative. At the same time, the valuation is also not attractive. You see most of the USA gold miners, USA or Canada, they are not so nice. That was our analysis of gold miners. Gold miners were lagging but it was one of the best performing industries this week. 
when it is lagging that is the time we look for strong stocks we found evn and silver leg to be like that in australia market in usa market there are several stocks that are possible long trades in terms of technicals fundamentally they are not as strong as some of the australian gold miners now we look at industries with worse performance five days was performing we look at bullet number one Food retailers and wholesalers continued decline from last week after Amazon decided to acquire Whole Foods Market. Probably none of the CEOs were very happy that Amazon came into their business. We had discussed Walmart, Kroger and Costco last week. All of them were at some kind of support, either at watermark or memory support or at annual pivot. Now, Walmart and Kroger held on very nicely to that low. Though the industry as a whole is one of the worst performers, Walmart Kroger held up very well. They were also fundamentally strong. We looked at that through Q Vital last week. Costco couldn't hold on. Interestingly, Costco never had a hollow or bullish candle. And its fundamentals were also not as good as that of Walmart and Kroger. It continued to drop. Costco, I like it as a company. I'm a regular visitor to Costco when I'm in US. Very strong company in my view, but it is very severely oversold on the chart. That is the point. You know, I think it is a strong company, but then when I open Q Vital, it doesn't show the strength. The chart doesn't show the strength. So what I see going to Costco store should not have an impact on how I trade. Looking at fundamental, looking at chart, it is not a good idea to buy Costco. It may be a technical long trade soon, not yet. Soon, if it gives a proper signal, long signal after being oversold. But fundamentally, it is not strong. So it may not be a good long term buy right now. We discussed GNC2, fundamentally strong and creating a base. You may go through Walmart Kroger. We'll not go through that now, but let's look at GNC. I am always keen to look at stocks which were very highly priced earlier. GNC at one time was above 60 and now it is $7.59. It has a strong brand name. In fact, they are present in many countries, not only in America. It is at a low price now, creating a nice base in weekly, nice base in daily. Friday's candle has a bullish shape. It may not immediately break up. It is moving sideways. We see that after the last earning session, which is showing in green color here, that means it was better than previous quarter. Actually, previous quarter, we can see from the weekly chart, had a loss of $6.35. Last quarter had a profit of $0.35. Cents. So it was positive and better than previous quarter that might have stopped it from going down further. It came back to the support nicely. So, and now it has a sign candle. If it breaks out of the memory triangle, it may be a good long-term buy. Let's look at the Q Vital one more time. GNC, get the Q Vital score now. One thing is to be careful not to click too many buttons at the same time. If I'm retrieving the PRs and Clicking the scoring at the same time, it gets confused. Okay, it has got GNC holdings. So let's look at the score. And immediately we can see it is quite strong. Among the PR groups, it is the strongest. It doesn't have all green, but if we look across all the PRs, it is actually the strongest. By the way, for long-term investing, I try to avoid stocks which doesn't have good earnings reliability. So SPTN, Though it has multiple greens, I tend to avoid it because it has no reliability in quarter to quarter earnings data. So next quarter or another quarter after that, it may fall down suddenly. So I am not happy to hold on to those stocks for long term investing. Whereas Walmart, we see, has very good earnings reliability. GNC is in the middle. It has good internal value. It is showing good dividend yield also relative to others. Let's look at the dividend. Okay, that's a very high dividend. 10.61 percentage is a very high dividend. 
So you may look into that stock from the defeated angle also. It can be traded with backspread or we could outright buy the stock. So that was GNC. We went to GNC from food retailers, wholesalers. GNC is still forming a base. It has very good fundamentals and we just saw it has very nice dividend. Let's look at bullet point two. Though energy is the biggest sector decliner. We saw it in sector analysis. Only oil equipment services industries became worse performers. There are other energy industries which decline, but the equipment and services, these two industries decline almost double of the other oil related industries. And we saw unit corporation is holding on to the base. It actually had a box long trade setup. The oil producers are holding on better. And this industry, oil equipment and services, though it is down a lot, we already saw last week also the fundamentals are very weak. So we are not very excited about taking long trade in these industries. Now apparel retailers, bullet point three, they decline. Several stocks are now very nicely priced. And these are strong brands also. They are LB, Finish Line, FINL, FL, Foot Locker, I think, and Course. LB we are discussing for a long time. I think we had a very good trade there. Let's look at LB. They own Victoria's Secret and several other very strong brands. We could catch it almost at the very bottom. It came down from a very high price after the bearish had indeed dropped. And it is slowly going up. Let's look at Foot Locker. I think FL is Foot Locker. It has a bullish headwind. It has a candle with upper tail on Friday. So there is no trade right now. But what I observed that there was a gap down three days ago with extreme high activity. Now price is holding. There is a watermark level in weekly around 50 and I noticed this gap happened through that watermark level. So if now this gap is filled, it will create, create a false downside breakout in weekly and in daily also. In daily, the watermark will be far away to the left side. You can see it more clearly in the weekly. So if it goes back to 50, it will have a nice false downside breakout with extreme activity in weekly and daily both. So that may be an opportunity to take a long trade. Here also we see the bearish headwind in weekly nicely caught the top here as well as here of the stock. Another reason why we keep looking at bearish headwind or bullish headwind at this point. We don't immediately buy the stock. We have the trade setup and the unambiguous checklist. If we apply the checklist, there is no trade right now at the right edge because the candle in weekly is still bearish, both in color and shape also. So we don't have any trade setup right now, but we may keep an eye, especially if it goes to 50, it will create a false downside breakup. But let's look at finish line, FINL. Finish line also having nice watermark support level in weekly price bounced up from their multiple times extreme or very high activity in the weekly chart extreme high activity in the daily chart there is a false downside breakout at the right edge however there is a long upper tail so at close of friday we might not take any long trade on monday we may keep an eye on this there is no standard setup though, because I see the weekly candle color is magenta. So a superior profit trader may wait. Last one is course. This looks better on weekly because it is already cyan in weekly color. Backdrop color on the left hand side. Delhi is inside a triangle. If it breaks out of the triangle using real time chart, one might consider taking a long position. Let's have a look at their fundamentals. Let's look at Pairs of LB, it has got us gap, GPS. We didn't see the chart this week, but we had seen it earlier. Foot locker, course, and finish line. Okay, so let's look at the fundamentals. Foot locker. 
many grains and the growth is also quite good relative to PRs the growth in EPS and revenue is good so that's why I identified foot locker as one possible one course good growth also several green and yellow finish line many valuation greens and growth is not good it is okay as I explained either we can expect growth or good pricing is very difficult to have both at the same time so that is how I looked at the apparel retailers it is down that is the time we start looking for strong stuff home improvement retailers Lowe's gave a very nice go with flow short trade this week Home Depot its peer company also dropped with a box short trade setup will home builders follow suit if we look at home builders then we see many of them are at pendulum high and Lenar dropped after earnings giving a beautiful gap short day trade this week and for swing trade it has a very nice bound short swing trade in this week and Lane is also Lane is Lenar is one of the fundamental weakest in the home builders industry just like we look at apparel we look at pharma when the industry is very down look for long when home builders are at the very top we start looking for short if we do that we like to look for the weakest stocks and Lenar was one of the weakest and the fact that home improvement retailers were going down may also give us some thought about shorting the home builders if the chart shows signal or at least be careful about the long positions let's quickly look at these three stocks so this is Home Depot weekly had a very nice not for long long <laughs> position holders but those who are just objectively looking at charts it had a very nice reversal candle this week tried to go up over last week's high sharply closed down and when it did that around this candle we see there is a bear release signal it had a false upside breakout it tried to go up above this watermark came down because the traffic light was green we will not immediately enter next day using early range breakout we could take the shot that ended up as a very profitable box short trade setup this week and low is weaker than Home Depot usually on charts so it had started declining earlier again very nicely after the bearish headwind in weekly and daily dropped well and on this candle this week it had a very clear and beautiful go with flow short trade setup on Wednesday and it dropped significantly it's a good profit by the way this bullish headwind also could capture the bottom very well so when I looked at home improvement retailers they are down so I thought why don't I look at the home improvement companies and they are at very high level so I wanted to find the weakest one so let's look at Lenar get its peers go to scoring and immediately instantly I can see that Lenar is one of the weakest in terms of its pricing this candle was the earnings day and see how beautifully it tried to go above the watermark resistance and memory resistance coming from far 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 away like this fake movie coming from far far away and came down that was a gap day trade short opportunity on this day extremely profitable using options on those earnings days also created a box short trade setup not a conventional one because the watermark is not clearly visible here but we can see the watermark and the memory resistance in the weekly so if we combine weekly daily we actually had a box short trade setup right now it is already down a little bit so i am not going to take a short trade right now there is also a memory support line in weekly if it goes up little bit and tilts down because fundamentals are weak and especially if the industry starts to roll over that may give us a very nice short opportunity we may keep an eye on that the industry as a whole 
is still strong. Many of the stocks are at pendulum high and several of them are still going up. But Lennar is the fundamentally weakest as we saw. Okay, that was our analysis of worst performing industries. We still have two more graphs to cover. Industries with biggest rank improvement, we look at them because we see here biggest rank improvers in one week sometimes turn out to be among the best performers in the following week. There was a question from Amit on basic material sector and I mentioned we'll come back to that. I already did the analysis. You see that basic materials as a sector gained with a small percentage. We saw in the sector graph, but seven out of the 10 biggest rank improvers are in metal and mining industries. Several of them are at or near buy point. I will not look at the stock, but you may look at X, US Steel, Vail, AA Alcoa. AA is in aluminum industry, X and Vail are in iron and steel. Vail is fundamentally one of the strongest in iron and steel and AA is also very strong in aluminum. So using the sector and industry analysis, we may be able to catch the very bottom, just like we could catch the bottom of solar equipment companies catch the bottom of pharma companies this may be a possibility of catching the bottom of some of these stocks which are very strong fundamentally food we are gained by the way we looked at food locker it is also a food we are company it came as a peer of l brands but it also is a food we are company that may be something in favor of taking long in food locker fl now let's look at the biggest rank decliners. Several bullet points. Biggest rank decliners are in all sorts of industries. Two of them are in finance. Two of them are in industrials. Two of the rank decliners in publishing media. And three of them are in utilities. Now utilities also declined as a sector. PEG had very profitable bounce short trade in early June. Let's look at PEG. This is a very beautiful setup on this candle because there were many watermark resistance as well as many memory levels at this point. This watermark, this watermark, so many memory in daily and several memories in weekly also. Price precisely hit the memory as we can see both in weekly and daily and went down accompanying by very high activity. So that was a picture perfect bounce short trade setup and also a sideways market box short trade setup. Very nice setup and very profitable one. Sharply dropped from memory line. This is one of the utilities. ED, SCG and WEC pulled back after bearish headwind in daily. Let's look at ED, SCG, WEC. After the bearish headwind three days ago, it is going down. Weekly also had a bearish headwind. It has a false upside breakout now in the weekly. Right now we don't have a trade. It already came down a little bit. ED, then is it SCG? Also had a bearish headwind and since then price couldn't go up. It has come down. It is at memory support. We are not going to take any shot now. WEC had a bearish headwind at pendulum high in daily. Since then price couldn't go up. Has a memory support. So we are not going to take any shot now. Let's go back to the industry analysis. DTE had box short trade this week. Okay, we'll skip that. But let's look at NI. Will it drop? from current price it is fundamentally very weak what do you think let's look at fundamentals in i and in my view this is a beautiful way of combining industry analysis technical and fundamental analysis and take trade with maximum edges in our favor in i source it's a multi-line utilities in usa get the q score it's retrieving the data Look at scoring, instantly we can see it is the weakest among these companies and 
you remember the first three columns are not only across these few companies it is across much wider group so it is weak in terms of the peer groups these two columns also in terms of wider group very weak instantly we can see let's look at the chart now in daily chart we already have lower high there was a bear release three days ago but it had a lower tail so we will not be attempting any short on thursday it had a flow color bearish so thursday you can see it had a go with flow short setup however the weekly was not matching weekly is supposed to be magenta for go with flow short because it is moving sideways the weekly hasn't turned magenta yet but it looks like in a better position to short than the other ones the other ones had memory support nearby or had declined already somewhat this is not very far from the local high so one may keep an eye on this may consider short if you see the industry is toppling over let's look at the industry ranking we can look at it from our website and search for utilities or you can click here to download it and i have downloaded it so let me open it if we download it is easier because we can just type utilities and all the utilities can come up and we can see it was very strong earlier utilities multi utilities and gas water multi utilities but gradually it is weakening over five day period it had a very big rank decline from 84 to 128 83 to 134 86 to 143 so it was strong some of the stocks were at pendulum high now the industry is starting to decline and we saw several stocks are starting to topple over Ena is one of the weakest fundamentally in this so we may consider taking a bearish trade in Ni. That was our sector and industry graph analysis. Let's spend few minutes going through the sector and industry ranking. Every week, we rank the sectors and industries across 12 periods. Rank them from 1 to 10, 1 being the best performer, 10 being the worst performer, and apply a heat map to that. Instantly, we can see not only which one is strongest now, like healthcare is strongest, industrial is next, we can also see the transition across 12 months. We can see healthcare, how it was weak earlier, now turning cyan. Energy is the lowest one now. Telecom is at the bottom, but it is showing up, down, up move. If it goes up this week, then AT&T may give a long opportunity. Utilities still strong as a sector, but weakening, we can see turning from cyan to magenta and we just saw in terms of weekly time frame it had one of the biggest rank decline some of the industries in utilities if we look at the same analysis for industries this we use for swing trading as well as long-term investment how for long-term investment we are looking for investment in industries like clothing accessories at a time when it was magenta and starting to turn cyan so maybe somewhere here for swing trading how we use it we are looking to take only long in industries that are strong that is clothing accessories if we scroll down let's say industrial machinery it is weakening and for swing trade short this is the kind of industry we would like to choose industrial engineering industrial machinery commercial vehicle trucks all of them are related to heavy industries you may look for short in them interestingly commercial vehicle trucks also last week we had discussed about railroads and trucking we saw that railroads were fundamentally very strong though in terms of industry it was starting to show weakness the individual stocks were very strong whereas in trucking the industry group was starting to show weakness and there were some very weak stocks in trucking. In fact, 
one of the weakest stocks that we identified in trucking last week declined and had a nice trade this week. So that is how we use the sector and industry analysis, both using the sitmap ranking table as well as the graphs that we discuss in every week's market round. I see a note on iron and aluminum industry. We already discussed about that. These industries are at the bottom and if it goes up, we may find the stocks with strongest fundamental and consider buying. I found Vail to be strong in iron and steel and Alcoa, very large company in aluminium is one of the strongest in aluminium industry. That is all that I plan to share in this week's session. Thank you for joining. I look forward to seeing you in our next class. Have a great weekend and trade profitably.